Popcorn Junkies, we're here to review this week's kitsch avant-garde. Very strange. Very strange art house movie. In Fabric, this is directed by Peter Strickland, who has made what, Mum? Castle in Varga, first film. Yeah, made on a, a shoestring budget, wasn't it? Yeah, in yeah. Romania, Romanian cast and crew, etc., etc. That's so, Castle in Varga. Castle in Varga, then made? straight into Bavarian South Studio, which yeah. m more or less most people, I think, thought it yeah, was. Yeah, I liked it. I mean, I had issues with it, and I think yeah. it went overboard, but yeah. it, it, there's a lot in it. A lot in a it. A lot in it. And then Duke of Burgundy, which I hadn't seen, Mark had seen at the film festival, but I went to see it and was bored. Rigid. Yeah, and that was a weird thing. It's not. I can often find. I think one of the joys of being into films so much is that it's quite hard to get bored in any film. So yes. if you do get bored, yes. there's a profound problem because there's so many. You know, film yeah. stimulates the mind, the eye, the nose, yeah. the ear. Well, not the yeah. nose. Yeah. It does mine when I do that. <laughs> um, but uh, I was bored with the Duke yeah. of Burgundy. Um, and that's not to say. I mean, all his work is cinematographically. Interesting, interesting at the very mm. least and some of it I would say is quite sumptuously beautiful and very very avant-garde very I mean, avant -garde. not often used and, yeah. and you know um, you know as we go into this review I'm, I'm kind of coming at it keenly from the perspective that I do think it's important that we don't that, that many films are made in very different ways yes it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to enjoy it but we need to sanction filmmakers ability to perhaps mix up the way in which they make films or tell and stories. Us, and surprise really. us. Yes, yeah, very yes, good point. Yes. Very good. Yeah, surprise us. So this is In Fabric. Now, to give you the simplest grab on this, In Fabric is a film about a killer dress. Yep, <laughs> it's a killer dress. This killer dress sits at the heart of a very oddly executed film, which principally revolves around the dress being bought and then worn and owned by a series of different customers, owners of the dress, um, who all have to pass through yes. the the narrative device of a department store. Yes, yes. Now, as I started watching this, and the department store, it reminded me at first... In, Grace uh, Brothers. Well, yes. <laughs> I read in one of the reviews, should this be called Are You Being Severed? So, well, yeah, oh, very, mm, very clever. Yeah, no, that's a telegraph. It has, it has got a sort of uh, Are You Being Served vibe. Yeah, and, and, and what were the name of the brothers in Are You Being Served? Was it the... Grace Brothers. The Grace Brothers. It, it did have that... Ding, 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 John Newman. Yeah, what was his strap line? Oh, you are naughty, whatever it was, you know, and Mrs... Mrs. Slocum with a, with a pussy. pussy. Yeah. It was very like that. It was very like that. So this clearly Peter Strickland is a man of the 70s and I'm sure he must have been thinking of Ivy. But once you're in the department store, it couldn't be less like no. Grace Brothers. No. Um, this is a gothic horror slash surreal. I'd say this is more of a surrealist film than a horror film. A yeah. slasher film, but with a dress. Gothic is a good word. I Gothic. Think Gothic covers it. There's so a lot of mannequin porn in yeah. it as well. A lot and of mannequin porn. Now, one before. I can only use that phrase, mannequin <laughs> porn. Yeah, there's some incredibly dubious characters. Right now, I'm saying all of this because for our more sort of mainstream film lovers, you may want to not see this film. I'm just going to say that out loud. Yeah. But. There's some you... scenes that nobody should see. Really. <laughs> there are some scenes that you wonder how they were even imagined. <laughs> <laughs> let alone shot and executed. That is so true. So true. And I, I'm not just talking about the obvious ones involving a menstruating mannequin and a man masturbating in the corner. I don't think she was menstruating, though. Uh, something was going on there. Yeah, but I think it was supposed to be the oil of... of uh, never mind. Let's not never get, mind. It was never mind. bad enough at menstruating. It was awful. We don't it need was any more. So awful. But if whether it's that, but I've never, and I have to give Peter Strickland full credit where credit's due. I've never seen a deranged washing machine lose its shit. Yeah. In quite the way that it does in For this. For me, film. a standout scene. It's in the trailer, unfortunately. So we were sort of knew what we were going to get. Yeah. But although it's I'd forgotten hysterical. it. Hysterical. It's he stays on the image, doesn't he? For he does. Quite a long time. And the washing machine is wrecked. I've never seen a more fully wrecked. No, but also I've never seen a washing machine demonstrate or articulate a, an angry emotion I was before. Say, it was furious. <laughs> Curious, that, exactly. It's a it's a curious film in terms of structure because you have this department store which is the sort of fulcrum around which all the yeah. stories revolve and yeah. we keep cutting back to this woman who's played by Fatima Mohammed who I think was in Duke of Burgundy who's this incredibly articulate and verbose yeah. shop assistant yeah, and she talks in these long sort of yeah I think the word is oratund or, or yes peculiar sentences incredibly which don't really ornate make language yes. but yeah. it, but an archaic and arcane yeah. language yeah. wasn't it sounds as if it should make sense but you're never quite sure not it only does. does it not make sense but as she's saying it i mean it's incredibly beautiful in one way yeah yeah but irrelevant in another 
And what's really odd is you've got a number of the Yanktas in this. I think Leo Bill, Hayley Squires, and Marianne Jean-Baptiste have all worked with Mike Lee. Yeah. You know, one of our most reputable oh, right. uh, directors. I think they've worked with Ken Loach too. I think oh, Hayley okay. Squires has worked with Ken Loach. And if you think about it, they're all into sort of social realism yeah. and, and observing that. So what you've got in this Which very this strange... Is no, this is not. <laughs> and what I think is kind of clever but doesn't necessarily work, and this is one of my major criticisms, you've got sort of social realist actors yeah. acting in a socially realist way yeah. within an incredibly ornate and artificial and surreal and just plain old strange yeah. that their the realism of their responses I for me jarred against what was going on around them a little bit whereas you had two other characters Julian Barnett Julian Barrett and Steve Oram who were playing it uh, were, were sort of of the film yeah were playing it in that way and so yeah. I found all the things that were most convincing about this film were the things that were really going for the surrealism whereas all the stuff that was tugging at reality I felt just didn't work oh, would you say that's fair what did you think of Marianne John Baptiste? Because you liked her. Didn't I liked you? her a lot. What, what did you like but, about her? Well, one of the things I was going to say was when, when you put her against, she lived in the real world. She was mm. in the real world, and so when these characters sort of tried to say that she wasn't doing things right, well, she was she was like exasperated. Exasperated. Mm. She was exasperated yeah. with her son for not doing all the things. She was yeah. exasperated with everybody, quite rightly. Mm. Now I thought she sat in that ex exasperation yeah, maybe, maybe really right. well. The, the film splits into essentially two stories. Yeah. The story around Mar Marianne Jean Baptiste who lives at home with her teenage son who's having an affair with a woman who's very sexual yeah. um, played by Gwendolyn Christie interestingly from Game of Thrones oh. and um, you've got the second story which is Leo Bill who's a washing machine mechanic um, and I don't know why I mean maybe it's because he was a bloke and I related to his put, put, put uponness. I don't yeah. know um, it, but he likewise had this sort of remarkable language around describing the rotary motors yeah. of washing machines yeah. and things like that. I don't know, I, I much preferred his story to hers. Yeah, well, I didn't, you see. I much oh, preferred right. hers to his, which is interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the dress, what did you think of the whole dress, how they executed the dress? Cause it, 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 I really like the way that, I mean, we'd seen the trailer and I suppose yeah. if one doesn't see a trailer... It's a great trailer. It is a great trailer. The girls were so enamored. They keep going, have you seen the film about the dress? I mean, yeah. I don't want them to see it now, some of the scenes. But... Yeah, no, no, exactly. But had I not seen the trailer, I mean, I really liked the way he sort of went full tilt. I mean, the very idea of a haunted dress is ridiculous, isn't it? It's but stupid. It's, it's absolutely mad. And you sort of keep thinking all the way through this. I made a film you... when I was 12 about a haunted town. Yeah, that, that as you're watching it and the material's going like this, you're thinking... Can I be watching this seriously? Mm. And he obviously he builds up the story around it. And um, there's no real story, though, is there? Well, other no. than you, other than you slowly see the demise of each person's story that you're following. I yeah. mean, everyone who gets who encounters the dress comes yeah. to a grisly end, yeah, you, so you yeah. understand that. Uh, yeah, and there's this sort of intense sort of discomfiture with everything. I mean, the Mar John Mar Marianne Baptiste mm -hmm. character is looking for a date. That's yes. what she wants a dress to go on a date with. She's sort of gone online, you know, uh, her son's husband, her husband's left her. And, and almost she, the fact that her son's having a sexual life yeah, has reignited yeah, this idea yeah. of it. Her son's it? Yeah. horrible to her. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and so is the woman who he's mm. having an affair with. She wants to be just normal in the world, so she goes online and she meets these blokes who I have to say, the first bloke, what did you think of the oh, first God, yeah, bloke? they were ridiculous, weren't they? I mean, they? he was hysterical. Did you feel what they were trying to suggest there was that every other character around our, our main characters were being controlled by the department store and the dress? Did you feel the suggestion was that the department store was controlling the dress? I mean, I very much felt... Oh. I wondered at times what was going on here was that because obviously the department store is the gateway that's what I'm looking for it was the gateway to the dress and the gateway to this underworld and because the dress was a sort of missionary if you like yeah, for that yeah, world, yeah 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 I wondered at times my thought and I'm, I'm grit grasp trying to make sense of this madness was that a little bit like Suspiria, what we were dealing with, whereas in Suspiria they had yeah. the dance school as a coven of witches yes, yes. and they were generating the devil from yes, beneath the school. Yes, I thought yeah. that the, the department store, you know, if you went down in the um, dumb waiter far yeah. enough, you'd end up in hell. Did you feel that? Did you feel get that metaphor or? No, oh. uh, but, 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 but that came towards the end, didn't it? It did. And, and I'd lost patience with it by ah. the end because I didn't like the second story as much oh, as the right. first. Although there's some very funny bits in yes. it. I so sort of... I so sort of lost patience with it that I didn't... Now I think of it, mm. that whole thing of them all sewing, yes, what else mm. could it be? Mm. And then it takes on, it actually takes on a level that's more interesting to me than yeah. just thinking of it, I mean, as a department store or as yes. a... Um... I had two very converging responses to it. By the end of the film, 
I didn't mind it. Rarely do I refer to oh, a film in terms right. of its Whereas reels. I, felt the opposite, I was I felt really intolerant of it to begin with. I yeah. felt annoyed with it. I felt, oh come on, oh this is yeah. stupid. I thought I'd heard reviews of it before it came out saying, oh, Peter Strickland's the master of making uh, what seems like accidentally not very good seem great. And part of me was feeling, maybe it's just not very good. Yeah. And it's very easy after the event, because it's a film and it's being delivered to us, to say, it's great. Yeah. You know, I think, yeah. I think it's not hard sometimes to just go for oddness mm -hmm. and claim it's sophisticatedly meant to be like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so there, there was that going on. And then when I got to the final reel of the film, or the final third, where you know, the washing machine mechanics life story has kind of almost come to an end and you get this sort of denouement, you get this conclusion. I felt that was the richest part of the film in terms of okay. his ideas, whatever ideas there were that were coherent, yeah, yeah. were kind of coming together. I mean, well, I... But, well, only that one, really. I mean, I mean which I buy, you mm. know, but that sounds very... But, he, but he, they pull it, to, without doing a spoiler, they do pull it together with that final shot of the bald woman yeah. descending and you yeah. get that sense of all the yeah. stories. Peter Strickland's very interesting from a star perspective. I mean, Duke of Burgundy used a lot of moth wings and butterfly wings, a bit like Stan Brackage, the mm. avant-garde filmmaker. And this mm. uses a lot of catalogues. I mean, and I remember, interestingly, as a boy in the 70s, I mean, this sounds odd talking to your mum about it, but one of the few places you could get a frisson yeah, of excitement was from, that, a, yes. was from yeah. the laundry section of, yes. a, of a catalogue. And yes. I remember, you know, my, my childminder's parents would have Argos catalogues. You'd yeah. look through them and there'd be the little laundry. And he made, he does create that sort of grubby sense of, yeah. sort yeah. of, I don't know, it's not erotica, but it is kind of erotica yeah. around stuff. But then it just gets a bit bloody disgusting. Well, he goes far too far. He does. He did in Duke of Burgundy, yes. I felt, but not in a... I mean, there's a way of going... Um, neither Mark or I are, are sort of really shocked by anything... No, nothing. ...that you can see on the screen. Nothing if it fits all. into a, yeah, a, absolutely. A, a structure. This was disgusting without there being any need for it. Yeah. I mean, the actual sort of, let's say, you know, there's an abuse. Let's just leave it at there's an abuse. Mannequin around, abuse. Like, mannequin abuse. Yeah. Mannequin abuse. Instead of just even leaving it at that, yes. he goes further with that, yes. with a bit that, you're, like you say, is almost unwatchable. Oh, yeah, horrible. hideous. And made it unwatchable. I would not recommend it or sanction my for daughter's your, watching it. No, no, exactly. For that reason. Now, mm. one could say, oh, well, that's just his vision. Okay, yeah. it might be, but why? I mean, why go that far? Yes. So what did you brilliant. think of the soundtrack? I thought the soundtrack, the soundtrack was amazing. is brilliant. And mm. I would say in all his films, the soundtrack. Yeah, his sound designer is amazing, isn't he? Yeah, it? I thought the sound was spectacular because you sort of hear something at the edges of your of your brain, and yeah. then it sort of coalesces into this thing in the middle. David Lynch always worked with Alan Splett, who was his sound designer, oh, and he? he. And when I made the short film The Masseuse, I worked with a chap Ben, who was is his boyfriend, and he. We spent more time on the sound design than we necessarily did on what's the, what's ostensibly called the soundtrack. And I think it's really rich. Another film recently that uses sound design and meshes it with music and soundtrack, which are two different things, mm. is Mandy, that film with Nick Cage. Yeah. And I think this was one of the areas of this that I think this this was a very rich film. And I think in fact all his films are like the Barbarian Sound Studio is about audio, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, he's very interested in the use of sound design and sound, yeah. sa sound structure yeah. and how that can morph into the fabulous soundtrack that he did have in this film which I thought was remarkable. Yeah. It gave it it gave the film that it, it was definitely riffing on Dario Argento. It was def definitely riffing on Hammer House of Horror. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That yeah. sort of exploitationist kind of yeah. almost verging on soft porn, yeah. not brilliantly executed, a bit Barbarella, a bit Roger Corman, yeah. all that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. But my here's my thing. A lot of people are talking about this as, oh, he's clearly the arrival of an auteur, you know, a film artist, an author. Mm -hmm. guy, you know, you know it. Now my thing thinking on that is is that really auteurs of the past like Hitchcock or Scorsese or David Lynch they happen to become those. Yes. They happen to, you can then, you, you get to a point in their careers where you look back and go, oh bloody hell, there's a body of work and these are the themes. Whereas I feel a little bit with uh, Peter Strickland, I just feel like everyone's willing him to be the auteur. Yeah. And he's, a, he's just ticking a bit fewer than he's the box. willing himself. Do you feel that? In, in a way, You've seen yes. him in interview quite a bit, haven't yes, you? Yes, yeah. yeah. And I, I just feel that um, bits of it were very watchable, mm. but I felt he was trying far too hard <laughs> in, that, in that way, in that yeah. way to just, to, to almost be, Shocking for the sake strange of shocking, for strangers, strange sake. for strangers' sake. Strange for strangers' sake, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that's where I think, you know, to, to call and Lynch this... Lynch never, I mean, you never get that with Well, him. I think that's what makes Lynch, when he was doing it originally, yeah. he may, become, may have become a little bit self-conscious, yeah. and that might be why he stopped making films. Yeah. But I do think with Lynch, he inadvertently hit upon this shit, and it was strange. Yes. So I think when people say, oh, this is very Lynchian, I think Lynch becomes a quick and easy grab for anything that's just odd, and actually there's far more at work in David Lynch than just being odd. Yeah. Whereas I felt this was being odd. Yes. 
going back to the original thought I had though, where I thought the elements in this that worked best were where you were sort of convincingly in the surrealism and just wallowing in it. Yeah. Was again, I go back to Julian Barrett and Steve Orman. At times this felt like a movie version of some of the best bits of League of Gentlemen. Yes. I mean, I could have watched those two who kind of play, they're playing their bosses, but also like bank managers because they're going yeah. for a loan and stuff. But they're sort of talking nonsense. But, Total but in gibberish. That very, very absolutely... You it's know, that banal, banal but sort of agreeable way. Yes. So you yeah. feel like Julian Barrett could be your friend. Yes. And cares. Yes. But there's an absolute emptiness behind yes. the eyes that suggests. So for, just to give you an example, it, it's things like um, it's come to our notice that your handshake didn't quite measure up to everybody else's handshake. I mean, yeah. could you? And, and you sort of think that wouldn't work. No, it absolutely. Works. And then the other guy will say something like, "Well, I don't think you'll find it was just the handshake." And yeah. Julian Barrett will go, "No, you know, he's quite right." Yeah. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> So, so earnest. Yeah. Earnestly benevolent. They treat it benevolent. totally tr truthfully, don't they? Yeah, so and, I, I, and that's what I mean. But I thought she did. I thought she did. You're right. And, I, yeah. and in retrospect, I think you She's are like, right. Oh, for God's sake, I can't really believe Very this Very hard is going to on. act against Yeah, that. but really? I'll go along with it. Because yes. they've got the power, yeah. I felt she was there. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, so, yeah. It was, so what do you think it was about? I really don't know. I mean, it's I about more than a killer dress. I mean, this is the thing with any kind of horror types of, you know, is it about, what is it about? Is it about the frisson between sex and fashion? Well, I thought that, that was the other thing I thought about it. Although I did lose patience, I lost patience towards the end. And that's mm. not to deny the sound was great. The look of it is mm. great. Mm. I felt that there had to be more of a connective narrative. And if that makes yeah. more fashion, then whatever. Yeah, I know to, what you mean. To, to keep my attention. And although there were two distinct stories, I lost that. Yeah. I lost that sort of keeping me, but, um, but I do think there is something interesting to be said about fashion and especially as you say magazines of a certain time and the mm. way they were treated and mm. the way that everybody treats fashion and I think I've seen one review in some, something or other that said it's about time somebody talked about I mean every every woman knows how important fashion is yeah. nobody ever talks about it really mm. in the sense there's a lot of, of obsessive fashion. chat about her being a size 36 was I a size yes. 36 am yeah. I a size they clearly looked less than a size 36 didn't they I mean I can remember Mac, when I was I was young and going to dentists and that they'd have Vogue, mm. Vogue was always yeah. my magazine of choice because the women were so sort of beautiful a bit like those women standing mm. there in what did you think women. of the I thought the department there were, there were moments in the department yeah. store that were quite quite bizarre like where a woman and jumps the queue and that, and that, that oh, sort of yes. that sort of presages the final scene of kind of bedlam Can, when they I have a fight was, you see that that what was all that about well that that annoyed me because i felt like he'd literally run out of an idea right. and he just it was an obvious one to yeah, start yeah, it almost yeah. you know? and what did you make of the man in the background who seemed to be the sort of the the, the, the well the grace brothers was he the devil i mean i, I felt so. that the analogy we were going yeah. for here was this is this is the gateway to hell yeah the dress is is taking people and to hell they're doing this all the time aren't they? yeah they're they, yeah they're around. constantly doing that on the telly and so yeah. so perhaps this is a film about you know a little bit like george a. romero's dawn of the dead which was a comment yeah. on sort of uh consumer Humorism, wasn't it? I do buy your thing totally now, though, on the thing because there's a, a section at the end where you go through the people and they're sewing, sewing, yeah. sewing. And I think I'm. In, that in really my, made. There's an article yeah. from Louise Bourgeois. It really made me think of the sort of. They, yeah. they become the minions of making more yeah. dresses now to go out into the world to capture and people. I wish I'd thought that more at the yeah. time, but I'd got fed up of it yeah. by then. Well, so now, having talked about it, yeah. it's a really rich vein. <laughs> it's a rich seam. <laughs> yes, yeah, a rich seam. Rich seam. Get it? Um, but. The but unfortunately, that rich seam of an idea came so late in the film. Yeah. I can't be bothered to watch it all again to kind of yeah. apply it because I think the idea that there is this strange hell-like department store that's sending out dresses yeah. to capture lost souls yeah. or bad yeah. souls. Though, uh, and you know. also, I tell you what he did. What he did exactly the same in Duke and Burgundy is he's very because he himself is absolutely entranced, clearly, and very mm. sort of attracted to the whole idea of dressing incredibly slowly mm. and incredibly sort of ornately yes there was lots of that to the yeah. point where you know you sort of felt oh get a hold of yourself get on with it we've seen this already yeah. you know taking off mm, mm. yeah and um i wouldn't say i wouldn't say this often about a filmmaker and i mean it in the kindest sense of the word but i think he's a literally a wanker <laughs> I mean, because you watch his films. No, I, I am. I'm going to say it. But I, I, he watches films. I think he there is a perversion to the guy. There has to be. You don't make these films without there being something. Maybe. maybe. But, I didn't know. Like, the key scene, which we've sort of mentioned but can't really even say how bad it is, I did think 
what am I watching? Oh, I mean, no, no. At that point, my I, my armpits started to pour with yeah. sweat. I just found it all unbearable. Luckily, I was the only person in the cinema. Oh, because God, thank God for that. Well, I'm kind of pleased I watched it on my own, though. As that <laughs> scene was happening, I was thinking, please, no one walk no, in at exactly, this point. Exactly. Um, okay, so just what would you give it as, as a score out of 10? How would you sum it up? That's an interesting one because. It's hard, isn't it? In a way, uh, you know, I mean, I'm pleased he's doing it in a way, in the exactly. way that one always is. Exactly. But, Oh gosh, I really don't. Maybe I'll go straight down the middle then and say, except I'm not going to, 6.5. Oh, 6.5. Okay. I don't know why I'm saying that, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think you, I mean, we've kind of said everything rather than mm. summing up, but I mean, I agree. I think it's really important that films like this are made. Made, I do. I too. think it's really important that we get films that annoy us, that agitate us, that frustrate us, that are perhaps a bit too much, a bit beyond the pale, because there's too much stuff down the middle of the road. That doesn't necessarily mean they're all always going to work for me no. on all levels. And no. I thought there were many great moments in this. I, Julian Barrett could read a, a, a menu. Yeah. And I will just fall in love with him. I am a big fan of Steve Oram too. He was in yeah, Sightseers. Yeah. They need to do something together. Yeah, I thought Leo Bill, you know, perhaps I've been a bit harsh on Marion Jean-Baptiste, but I mean, I, I, I preferred the Leo Bill story. I don't know why there was something. I do find that put upon man story quite funny. Yeah. But, um, but you're right. I think Marion Jean-Baptiste was acting against an incredibly odd thing. It was a yeah. very hard job to do. Yeah. I, just think, I just think in a weird way, I needed more of a sense of what we were getting to at the end to perhaps give, give me a bit more thematic. Yeah. rigour at the beginning it was yeah. too disjointed and odd for odd's sake yeah great moments in there I mean the washing machine moment is just hysterical the canary you know I mean oh, there the are canary. the canary I mean there are many moments and and you know and there are some t there are scenes where there are a few moments there where I, I did sort of groan as you saw a dress move across the floor yeah. menacingly yeah that's what he's going for so I do get a bit concerned though about the idea that if you were to say that was naff and the answer is it's meant to be naff that could be used for almost everything. And yeah. there's naff, there's cool naff, and then there's not cool naff. Yeah. And there, at times, this was not cool naff. Yeah, but so it was, yeah, so. Basically. I'd say it's a surrealist film. Yeah. It's a surrealist film. Um, I would probably give it, you gave it 6.5, I'd probably give it 6 out of 10. Yeah. 6 yeah. out of 10. Yeah. For more film and family fun, don't forget to click the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell to never miss an update. <laughs>